Truth be told, the reason I planted a garden last year was that I wanted to grow tomatoes. There's nothing like the flavor of fresh, homegrown tomatoes. My crop was pretty good, but I want even more tomatoes this year. And that's where Danielle comes in. All right, Sarah, you haven't let us plant a single thing in this bed all season. And why is that? Because I want to fill the whole thing with tomatoes. Oh my gosh, you're going to have a huge crop this year. That's the idea. All right, so we're ready to plant because nighttime temperatures aren't falling below 50 degrees and the threat of frost, of course, is over. So we've got some work to do. Let's go get your seedlings. So that's quite a selection of seedlings that you grew from seed this year. Yeah, and before you ask, yes, I've been hardening them off bringing them out and during the day and taking them back in at night. Awesome. Now what kinds do we have here? Oh, we've got a whole variety here. We've got some indeterminates like this black crim that's got a big meaty fruit that's like a deep purple color. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some determinates like this green zebra, that's a stripy green tomato, and also some Roma tomatoes for sauce. And then I have the several cherry tomatoes because I love those teeny little fruits, like this sun gold, which gets sort of yellow gold fruit that are really sweet. Well, whether or not they're indeterminate or determinate is gonna depend on placement. So let's get that worked out and start planting. Okay. Okay, Sarah, since determinate tomatoes are pretty short, we're gonna put those at the front of the bed. So you wanna evenly space them. Here's another green zebra. And here's our two Roma tomatoes. Ah. The cherry tomatoes we're going to put down the middle of the bed and we're going to use stakes as support because you can take their squid-like arms from the plant and tie them back to the stakes. Okay. So here's one of those and just kind of evenly space them across the bed. And the indeterminate tomatoes that have the big fruit and need the most support because they get really tall and top heavy, we're going to build a trellis system like our peas and put those in the back. Okay. So here's those. Uh, we need a few more plants for the end. No, I've got a surprise for later for you. Can't wait. So first what you want to do is pull your seedlings out of their individual growing pots and tease the roots with a tip of a pencil. Then snip off any of the lower seed leaves that may still be hanging on to the plant. Dig a hole with your trowel deep enough to sink the entire plant except for the top couple sets of true leaves and bury the tomato plant. This was the part that made me really nervous last year. I couldn't believe that you were supposed to bury the plant so deep. But then I read that all those little hairs along the side of the stem actually form roots, which creates a stronger, healthier plant. So I took the plunge and I wasn't disappointed. Sarah, that looks awesome. Why don't I give you a hand so this goes a little faster? Okay. This looks good, Sarah. Now we planted our tomatoes actually closer than is recommended, but we had space restrictions and you wanted the biggest harvest possible. So in order to make sure that they're gonna get the proper support and air circulation, we're gonna stake, cage, and trellis them. Right now? Right now. So do we let the bottom part of the trellis just hang like we did for the peas? No, actually we want this to be as tight as possible so it will support these really big tomatoes. So let's use some landscape pins and just pin it right into the ground so it's nice and tight. This looks great, Danielle, and I'm glad you helped me stake the tomatoes because I had problems last year with the plants outgrowing the supports. But why did we use three different types of stakes? Well, that was based on our different types of tomatoes that we had. For large indeterminate tomatoes that can reach upwards of eight feet and also have large fruit, a tall trellis is best because it's the strongest. For determinate tomatoes that usually only get about five feet tall or so and have smaller fruit, a standard tomato cage will work. And then when you don't have enough room to fit in either one of these support systems or for things like cherry tomatoes that have very long arms, Steaks work best, and you can snug them in just about anywhere. So we're all set then. Let's get some lunch. Okay, but first for my surprise, I actually brought you two of my tomato oh, seedlings. Wow. They're called hillbilly potato leaf, and since I know how you and Juno like your potatoes. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's get planted. 